In 1851, in what is now known as Iraq, archaeologist and explorer Sir Austin Henry Layard discovered a library with 22,000 tablets containing what we know to be the earliest writings on Earth. The writings date back to over 6,000 years ago when the region was known as Mesopotamia, Sumer, and Babylon. Amongst these vast writings is a story which mirrors the book of Genesis in the Bible. It tells a story of a great flood which reshaped the face of the planet Earth and all of her inhabitants. It tells a story of a tower built and the creation of the spoken word. One of these scrolls includes a star map of what appears to be a sun and its planets. The writings include detailed descriptions and maps of our solar system matching what we know today and beyond. It includes a tenth planet in an orbit between Mars and Jupiter. It is written that the tenth planet Nibiru was thrust into our solar system and collided with the planet Tiamat. The remaining bulk of Tiamat over time became Eridu the Earth as we know it, and the rest of her became the asteroid belt. In retrograde to the other nine planets, Nibiru took orbit around our Sun in a long ecliptic or apogee. Lasting 3,600 years, it passes between Mars and Jupiter. In recent years, based on the patterns of our known solar system, astronomers have been looking for a planet with this same orbit. In search of this planet, they discovered the planet Pluto. The search continues. According to the ancient texts, this detailed information was given to them by the Anunnaki, or those who from heaven to earth came. They described the Anunnaki as a reptilian race of gods which came to the earth in fiery ships from their home planet of Nibiru, the tenth planet. It is written that these Anunnaki came to the earth to mine gold and other elements to serve in protecting the atmosphere of their distant home planet. After a workers' revolt, the Anunnaki rulers began to genetically alter cro magnon man to create a slave race, resulting in the human race. It was said that we were created by the gods in clay vessels. It is written that man was forbidden to depict the Anunnaki in their actual form. Just prior to the Great Flood, the bulk of the Anunnaki would return home, leaving numbers of them behind to watch over the earth. Anu was king. Assigned to Anu to heed his instructions, 300 in the heavens he stationed as a god, the ways of earth to define from the heaven, and on earth 600 he made reside, after he all their instructions had ordered, to the Anunnaki of heaven and of earth, he allotted their assignments. This story of reptilian gods from the heavens creating man is not at all uncommon. It in fact can be found in most every region of our planet. In Japan, emperors claim descent from dragon gods who came from the sky. Australian aborigines teach of a reptilian race which lives underneath the earth and governs over men. They believe they are descendants of a race of dragon humans. China teaches the serpent queen Nukua interbred with man. India calls these reptilian gods Nagas and claim they seeded their royal families. Throughout the Middle East it is believed a serpent race created man. The book of Genesis tells of giants who came from the heavens to breed with the daughters of man. They are called the Nephilim. In Africa they call them Chitari, children of the serpent. The royal kings of Africa claim descent from serpent gods who came from the sky. In South America, the Mayans teach that their ancestors were the people of the serpent. The Aztecs were said to be created by a serpent woman. In America, the Hopi Indians believe sky gods came to earth to breed with their women and refer to them as their snake brothers. The word Sioux means snakes and Iroquois means serpents. It seems the only places you will not find this historical story is where the history has been methodically destroyed. The descendants of King Anu in Samaria and Babylon can be traced throughout time. The pharaohs of Egypt were from the bloodlines of the Babylonian kings. The rulers of the Roman Empire can be traced to Egyptian hierarchy. All throughout Europe, the royal families can be traced back to the great Roman emperors. Thirty-four of the presidents of the United States are directly descended from European royalty with the remaining eight who are only closely related to these same bloodlines. In 1934, President Franklin Roosevelt placed the Great Seal, originally created in 1782 by the Freemasons, 
on the dollar bill. Represented in the Great Seal is a pyramid and the all-seeing eye, known to be used by the elusive society of the Illuminati. Strung together in conspiratorial confusion are secret societies such as the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and the Bohemian Club. In 1917, National Geographic did a story on a place in Montreal, California called Bohemian Grove. The story reports a place where the world's elite, members of the Bohemian Club, retreat to in late July and conduct an ancient occult ceremony called the Cremation of Care. Every year in July, the world's leaders, media moguls, and members of the World Bank spend two weeks of what is known as a men-only retreat at the Grove. In the year 2000, BBC television show World of Wonder infiltrated Bohemian Grove with hidden cameras and aired the video on the BBC. The video shows the large mass of men donning red and black robes and once again conducting the cremation of care ceremony. The altar is at the base of a 200-foot owl, the Babylonian symbol of the god Moloch, the god of human sacrifice. In the video, a body is delivered upriver to the altar where it is set on fire. Upon being aired, members of the Bohemian Club reported that the ceremony is a put-on, merely done for entertainment and fun. This history tells a story of our world leaders having a deep involvement in satanic tradition, worshipping our reptilian overlords, serpent gods. It poses the possibility that we may be and have always been enslaved by our leaders, no different than sheep or cattle. There is an endless amount of information out there which supports this, but don't take my word for it.